This is going to be uh, the first of a two-part uh, series entitled The Harry Potter Phenomenon. Now, uh, before we get into um, Harry Potter and why we shouldn't like him uh, necessarily, uh, I just want to uh, say a few remarks with regard to our church and our stand. You know, it's difficult in these days uh, as we are competing with a whole lot of things, sports, TV, uh, and other things that attract um, kids to, uh, to participate, uh, uh, commit their time, and so forth. This is especially true in relation to other churches. Uh, I mean, kids are going to flock to churches where it is fun and games. And of course, our church does not do that. It's not that we don't have good times and that we can't have fun and games uh, per se, uh, but that's an exception to the rule. The rule is that we want our kids to grow up like the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, what kids we have. And the Lord Jesus Christ devoted his early life to preparing for adulthood so that he could be perfect. And he was perfect all through his, uh, his, um, his uh, uh, adolescent uh, uh, time, his young life, uh, so that he could be our savior. And uh, we believe that though we should enjoy life and we can joke about things and have a good time, that one of the main things, especially with regard to church, is that it should be devoted to learning the word of God and so forth. But of course, uh, even even people that are uh, near and dear to us, family members and close friends, they, they can't understand this concept uh, because we'll go and talk about things like Santa Claus and why we don't like him, why we should not pray to him, why she w we should tell kids the truth. You know, there's a big issue today about uh, morality and, and uh, those that would go to these churches, well, we want the Ten Commandments, okay? One of the Ten Commandments says, thou shalt not bear false witness. And to tell kids that there is a Santa Claus to whom we pray and look and ask favors and so forth, and that there is some Saint Nicholas to, to do so, is bold-faced lie. We're, we're, we're teaching them that lying is okay, they the ends justify the means and so forth. And here at our church, we don't believe that. But of course, these other churches bring the jolly old elf into their churches and have these, these times for them. Uh, and we believe it is idolatry associated with demonism and so forth. Not only that, you come to Easter. What is Easter all about? Well, churches have Easter egg hunts, that gets the kids all excited and so forth, has nothing whatsoever to do with the resurrection of Christ and what he did, but it has everything to do with paganism. Uh, rabbits who multiply quickly. Uh, it's fertility cult, uh, in other words, a symbol of a fertility cult. And the eggs, that's what it's all about. And it has crept into Christian circles. And, and people like us, we say, no, well, wait just one second. Uh, shouldn't we avoid this and teach our kids the truth about about Easter, or we call it Resurrection Sunday, uh, the truth about Santa Claus and, and the like. We have been duped in time past, but we've learned some things since we've become believers and have grown in the Word. But you can't get through uh, because uh, we want to cater to kids. Uh, if it's not going to be fun, if you know, why are we here? Come, we're having fun. It's it's almost a mechanical thing anymore. It's not. We're here to learn about Jesus Christ, so we can live for Him a perfect life, so that uh, the, He will bless us be, and reward us for our faithfulness to His cause uh, and service. We adore the Lord Jesus Christ, and we want to obey Him in all. You don't hear that business. It's you got to have this, that, and the other to cater to the whims of, of kids who can't keep their attention on anything because of our, our world uh, and the way that it is. We're trying to give them fun. So if they, they don't, if they don't keep their concentration here, we got to hurry up and switch it over here and, and give them something else to so switch it over here until they have an attention <laughs> a, a deficiency syndrome. They can't keep their minds on anything. Well, we hold up to them the standard of the Lord Jesus Christ, who concentrated in his life from, from day one where he became aware until the end, so much so that he never sinned. He had a biblical answer for everything in life so that whenever the, the issues of life came his way, he answered it with scripture. 
Now, I don't know many, uh, many of us, uh, even as adults, that can do that, though that's what we're attempting to rectify and, and do now. But that's what he did as a young person. Uh, he, he was able to do that. And so that is our goal. Now, I say that because I know as a pastor, I catch an awful lot of flack from folks. Oh, here we are again. You know, you took on Pokemon, you take on Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and, and so forth. And now we've got Harry Potter. What what do you expect our kids to do? Well, to, <laughs> if you ask me, I will gladly tell you what I what I would expect uh, them to do. Be faithful to the local assembly, open their Bibles, learn the lessons of a, of a pastor teacher and other books that that are uh, compatible to the theology that we have here. Learn those things and apply them to life as well as the other things that are needed for life today. Uh, and to keep your mind focused on serving Jesus Christ. Commitment to him, devotion to him, dedication to him should be first and foremost. But um, but uh, uh, today's um, culture, today's society, today's world ha is altogether different in, uh, in raising kids. And that's why, of course, uh, it is difficult to get kids even, even here to our church. People don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear about a guy by the name of Harry Potter. Now, uh, we've been introduced through the news media and so forth. Uh, to the books that have been uh, written. There are seven of them that are coming in this series. Only four of them have been written about this fictitious teenager by the name of Harry Potter. Now, the first three books are bestsellers. And depending on the news source, uh, there, there's some conflicting um, uh, statistics here, but depending on the news source, one uh, uh, source quoted that it's been published in 115 countries. Well, I, I somewhat doubt that, but uh, since it was in the, uh, the newspapers, and we believe everything they say, <laughs> sure, uh, we put it in there. Eight million copies for the first three and climbing. But this fourth, you know, when you have pre-press orders. When you have people demanding a book before it's written and before it's published, you, 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 uh, you perk up your ears. Because in the United States of America, you have 3.8 million copies, 1.5 million in the United Kingdom, and that's just these two nations alone. These books have been written, they say, uh, in over 40 languages and have gone out to, to the world. So much so that those who are promoting it uh, say, these series of books have unified and captured the attention of all the children of the world. And when I heard that, I said, I'm going to have to say something. I can't help it. Uh, I will break. <laughs> I'll burst a gasket. Uh, when, when you have something like this capturing the attention of all the children, because you see, it's my contention that uh, the rapture is soon to, uh, down the road and that all, all uh, Satan is waiting to do is for us to die off. Uh, he, he wants us to, uh, uh, there was a, a guy with a t-shirt the other day and he had a frog on it and he was a believer and he's using it as a witnessing tool and he said, where are you gonna go after you croak? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, he got his message across, but uh, maybe he should be a little more subtle uh, than that. Uh, but where are you gonna go after you croak? But, uh, but he's, Lucifer's waiting for us to just croak, this generation to die off. And he is bringing up the next generation in preparation for the revelation of Antichrist. It's, uh, I'm, I'm uh, bound and determined to, to, to uh, believe that. And one of the ways that he is doing that is by introducing certain issues to this generation, this up and coming generation. And one of the ways is because of literature. What child do you know of, unless they're the exception to the rule, likes to read? With all these computer games and the television, uh, you know, and, and the, the various tools that they, uh, they have, what kid likes to read? And yet we have millions upon millions of kids getting these books and actually reading them.
Not just one time, but over and over. What is it? What, excuse the phrase, magic uh, is in these books causing this uh, um, generation to, uh, to do this? Well, as, uh, as we are entering in this study, as we have said, the important thing for us to notice is that this book is written about a young person who is a wizard in training. Now, I've already had a question. Well, what about the Wizard of Oz? Well, uh, can't somebody say, well, didn't, didn't your generation like the Wizard of Oz? And I did. I, I would recommend it for young people. It's not the matter with the Wizard of Oz because you're not comparing uh, uh, a, uh, apples and apples here. The Wizard of Oz was a dream. You remember? She dreamt it. It was all in her imagination. Uh, and she never sought powers for herself. She was looking for this wizard to help her. When she finally got to the wizard, what was the thing about him? He didn't have powers, remember? <laughs> uh, he, he didn't have powers, it was all an appearance, just so he could uh, uh, live there in the wonderful land of Oz with a horse of many colors, a uh, horse of a different color, excuse me, uh, and, and the like. And she always had the power to, to go back home, right, just had her feet to take her back there. That's all she had to do is make the decision, you see. It was different. Now, again, it dealt with some similar issues, but it was different. She was good, she had no magical powers, and what did she do to the wicked witch? She killed her with what? Water. Symbolism. <laughs> Get rid of the evil in your life. Use a little soap and water and, uh, and then that's it. These books are about teaching young people the terms and the uses of uh, the occult. And that is their purpose. I don't care how much they're going to contend, whether they're just merely entertainment. Their purpose is to draw young people in to educate and to challenge them to experience these things. Now, here's the thing. Harry Potter is uh, just one of the other uh, wizards, along with the witches, in what's called the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Where is it located? Somewhere in Scotland. And if you would do just a little bit of research, you will find that Harry Potter is preparing to be a Druid priest. A Druid priest. Who are the Druids? The Druids were those who went from the Tower of Babel and settled in uh, Northern Europe, uh, England, Ireland, and Scotland. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I didn't know this, but... Uh, Diane and I went to see the Lord of the Dance, okay? And uh, all of a sudden, as I, as I was there, I, I noticed that it was, a, it was a circle of trees round about it that was the setting. And as they were uh, setting this thing up, I noted that there were some people with some, uh, you couldn't see their faces, but they had some cloaks on them when bringing the fire out, and they encircled this grove of trees, and I said, oh, those are Druid priests. And sure enough, that's what the whole thing is all about. It is about a conflict between two with this uh, pixie or fairy here that's going to bless the one guy and, uh, and he uh, um, uh, gets the girl. You know, that's what the whole thing is about. But it, he, he does so in the midst of the grove of trees. Druid priests are sun worshipers, and it's a, it's a direct link all the way back to Baal worshipers, who was the sun god of the Canaanites. Well, that's, that's who it is, the same Babylonian type thing, just different language, different ge uh, 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 geographical location. Um, and so we're, we're now having young people to learn about and be associated with Druid priests. The same god, Baal, it's a different name, but the same God that um, God judged the Canaanites and the Israelites for worshiping. By the way, who all was involved in the judgment by way of age groups when Israel came in and was uh, to kill everybody for Baal worship? 
old people, middle-aged people, younger parents, and all the kids. Anything that had breath in Canaan that was associated with Baal worship or Druid priests is what they are, different name, were to be killed. That's what scares me, you see. Uh, people, people today in today's world, they don't study these things. They don't want to know these things. They don't see any of the association. But I'm telling you, there's an association here. And this young kid who is so popular is training to be a Druid priest, which, by the way, if, you've, um, if you know the story of, uh, of King Ar Arthur uh, and uh, uh, King Arthur and the, the Round Table and Merlin the Magician and so forth. Do you know what Merlin the, the Magician was? A Druid priest. And he's the guy that helped, uh, uh, he's the guy that helped King Arthur. Do, and why was his table round? Have you, ever, have you ever studied a little bit about Stonehenge? Stonehenge has to do with a circle within a circle within a circle and those, those stones. And why the Druids, and as a matter of fact, this very year they had a, um, a Druid celebration that they had banned it for a long time. It's Stonehenge. But this year they opened it up and you saw all those people beating drums and they had their cloaks and the fire and, and so forth. It, it's, it's coming back. It's, it's a resurgence. And we'll see why. There's a, there's a connection here between the last days and Harry Potter. The last days of the, that generation entering into the tribulation period and this book, as innocent as it may seem, there is a connection uh, as to what's uh, happening. Uh, the name of the author of this book is J.K. Rowling. It's actually Joanne Kathleen. She's 34 years uh, of age. By the way, she got the highest honor in Britain for being an author. Uh, uh, just this year. She has written four books now. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now it's this fourth book that's, all of them have caused a rage, but they keep building. It is 752 pages. Now, those pages that have the storyline are 734, but <laughs> give or take a few pages, it's a thick book. It costs uh, 26 bucks, but I understand they've, they've reduced that. It was released, now mind you, one minute after the bewitching hour. And they had Halloween type par uh, parties to do it. They had Harry Potter parties. <laughs> Harry Potter parties. I did that just purposely because when I, when I said it to myself, I was like, but I can't say that three, four times real fast. Anyway, they had some festivities for Harry here. As part of those festivities were wand making, uh, broom decorating, receiving tattoos, uh, petting owls, donning the costumes that are part of the book, wearing witch hats, sharing uh, stories uh, uh, and related games and so forth. Now, this is all in an attempt, of course, to sell, but bottom line is they're, they're pushing this uh, because they want to make money on it. They want to capitalize on all the interest and curiosity. But the underlying theme of it all is to get kids to learn these terms. And they draw kids in with what is called a manipulative consensus process. Pastor, I've never heard of that before. Sure you have. In the 60s, we used to say, everybody's doing it. Today, it's the manipulative consensus process. <laughs> but uh, back then it was, well, everybody's doing it. Now, what does that mean? You get drawn into the book. Uh, you are uh, told to interact and become more or less one of the characters. It is a virtual type deal. And to, to learn how to utilize these, these various things. And that everybody is doing it. You don't want to be the odd man out. You want to stick out like a, a sore thumb. Uh, you know, uh, you don't want to be different uh, than that. As a matter of fact, they call those of us who are different mundane muggles. Now, you don't want to be a muggle, do you? 
Well, boy, I, when I got up this morning, I didn't want to be one either. But I guarantee you, somebody listening to this study that we're going to have is going to think that I am a muggle. It's one of those fundamentalist feudal fundies that's uh, out there railing against the sin in the world. Well, if the world wants to do it, that's fine. However, uh, I just want to warn us because we are around kids that are going to be drawn into this. And then we're going to wonder why they act the way they do. We're going to wonder why they don't pay attention. We're going to wonder why the values we grow up with are not their values. We're going to wonder all the, of these things. And, and we'll say, well, sure went that way when I was growing up. That's right. It is a different world. And we, we are communicating values that Antichrist is going to use to this next generation. So what is a muggle? To quote the book, they're boring, blinded, biased humans who either don't believe in witches who, or who think that witches are evil. Now, if you go to the Old Testament, thou shalt not suffer a witch to do what? Live. <laughs> you didn't stone this gal, you burned her. That's, and you know the Salem witch trials? Where did they get that from? Right from the word of God. Now, <laughs> please, I am not saying that we go back to, to burning uh, witches and, and so forth. But what I'm telling you is that the word of God imposes under other dispensations one of the strictest penalties imaginable, being burned at the stake for being a witch or a wizard. And uh, we'll get to those things uh, in a while. I think witches and wizards are evil. Uh, and though, though there are those... Uh, fairy tales and there are you know some of these various things uh, that have been in the past sure there's though we don't necessarily like it it's not it's not uh, wrong if you come out if you're the hero in the thing and you're not trying to use their powers to control life that's what harry is all about dabbling in the new age in the occult now what is taught in some of these things we're uh, on the uh, top right in our study guide. We are seeing values transferred. What are they? Multiculturalism. Because of our global economy, we're all becoming, fast becoming one, and one religion is as good as another. But there are some problems with that. Some countries... Uh, have their culture and society based on false religions. For example, take Japan. And we've got Japan very close to us now. But what about Japan? Why did Japan have two atomic bombs dropped on them? Who do they worship? Who is their god? Number one, they worship their emperor as a god. Number two, they worship their ancestors as a god, and they made images of them, put them in the clefts of the rock, put, gave them food and, and, and so forth, prayed to them, tried to talk with them, which is necromancy and so forth. You have your, the Shintoism, Buddhism, uh, Confucianism, and all those other isms that were part of that, that permeated that society and culture. That's what built that society. And when you get that uh, coming in, you bring that culture and multiculturalism. Any culture is okay. And just what you're okay, I'm okay. Uh, and it's getting us to, to put down our weapons and say uh, it's fine. As a matter of fact, um, uh, up in uh, North State here, we've got the Dalai Lama who has had up to 40,000 people pay a hundred bucks to get in to see this guy. Uh, and to hear what he has to say about world peace and, and, and how it's all coming together and the, and the like. The Dalai Lama thinks he is a reincarnation of people in the past uh, and believes in the transmigration of souls, which, by the way, Harry Potter uh, does, as we'll, we'll see here. The transmigration of souls and the like. And he believes that he is a reincarnation of, of people in the past to this point and that he should be worshipped. Now just think, think about this. We have 40,000 people in that area paying 100 bucks a person to hear this, this guy. I wonder if there's a grace church in that area. Hmm? 
wonder if there are fundamentalist churches that are are big and 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 blossoming and people would give a hundred bucks uh, to go hear that pastor teacher nonsense uh, we don't want to hear any of that uh, business. We want to hear the Dalai Lama. I mean, he's just uh, the great one. So it's a multiculturalism taught in these books. Global community. You ever heard of a lady who wrote a book, It Takes a Village? Global community? I, I, pr I promised myself I would not take off on that, though I want to very badly. Deification of Mother Earth, invoking the animal spirits. Harry converses with animals. He's got a friend who is a boa constrictor, and he talks to them. Interesting thing about it is that we believe that the snake in the tree in the garden was a boa constrictor. That's the, he was a boa constrictor, and there are there are things for that. Though there are there are other um, snakes, could be, but it was probably a boa constrictor. That's Harry's friend. Also, uh, they are told to talk with the dead. As we will see, that's why the owls are there. Owls are mediums. They show omens and they're supposedly communicators with the dead, channelers and so forth. So uh, let's go from this particular uh, point on to a definition of the occult. What is the occult? Well, actually, the word itself has to do with something that is simply secret or something that is known to the initiated. Now, we, we right here, uh, more or less, uh, have, um, ha have an empathy with this particular word. The reason is Paul uses such a word to describe this dispensation. Mysterion is mystery, or it was used for the mystery cults. Uh, you had to become an associate and initiate in the mystery cults in order to understand what in the world all that gobbledygook meant. And you had to, to be a disciple of this particular uh, discipline or, and learning. And but Paul says, okay, now wait one second. I'm going to take this word and I'm going to sanctify it. And I'm going to give it uh, a divine meaning. Uh, the mystery. Uh, and puts the definite article there. Something specific God had in mind. Kept secret in the past, but now made known. But who's it made known to? Those who are initiated, no one else understands it. You got to be saved. You got to get in the word. And then you begin to, to see that God has a plan and program and he kept this part of it secret, but it's now known to those who are initiated. We, we believe, and now you take this right, in a cultic language, that's fine. It just simply means something secret made known to initiate the initiated. However, the concept itself, we would never say that. We would never use that because uh, the occult has a, uh, an evil connotation to it. So we would keep it in those confines. It means knowledge that, uh, that has to do with mysticism, spiritism, magic, uh, the demon world, uh, and and the like and just those who who understand share this common enlightenment uh, are, 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 are privy to its meanings now we believe that our young people are being taught this do you know that Harry Potter has <laughs> umpteen websites umpteen glossaries dictionaries he's even got encyclopedias where you can go in there and learn what a muggle is, and learn what all these terms are. And there, therein lies the danger. Our kids, in order to keep up with other kids and their playing cards, in order to, to be savvy on, on the, on the, at school and so forth, you have to know these terms in order to keep up. Now, somebody come in there, well now, what about the gospel? What does that mean? What does it mean to believe on Christ and have faith in him? What does sanctification mean? You know, oh, no, no, no. Well, we have to learn the terms associated with Harry Potter. 
uh, and, uh, and be up to speed on those. In uh, these various books, they teach you what spells are, counter spells, potions, divinations, clairvoyance, transformations, uh, transmigration of, of souls, and so forth. Now, of course, uh, it doesn't, it's not advanced, it's, it's rudimentary, but it's the beginning. <laughs> It's, it's a, to see that, well, here's a kid, 11 through 17, here's a kid who uses this for good. And it's interesting that uh, some of the comments that kids have made with regard to Harry Potter, that they want to use it to bring together our world, to unify our world, to better our environment, and so forth. And it, it goes right back to the Druid philosophy uh, of the groves, the environment, sun worship, fertility cults, and the like. Okay, let's look at a verse of scripture, or several, in Acts 19. I want to show you what some grace believers did to these kind of books. Just so you won't say, well, the pastor's just off on another tangent. He is, uh, he's uh, uh, stumping his uh, particular beliefs. He's up on a soapbox and so forth. And that is not true. Um, Acts chapter 19. Now, we're in Ephesus, and Paul has spent some time here. Verse 17 says, This was known to all the Jews and Greeks dwelling at Ephesus. Fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. Now, do you get that? Christ was magnified in the, in the area. Christ was exalted. Christ was proclaimed. Um, and then it says, And many that believed came and confessed. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. But now remember, we have studied uh, the, just uh, was it two Sundays ago, the repentance spectrum. That to repent with the mind means that there is, is an obvious change as well in the life. And that that was part of Paul's commission. That uh, you repent uh, and come to Christ and then do works meet for repentance. Fitting for a change of mind. Now what is the first thing these people did after they believed on Christ, wanting to exalt and magnify him only? Many of them also which used curious arts. <laughs> Curious arts, secret knowledge, the occult, uh, magic, spells, wizards and witches. Uh, and uh, they, they had it all. And by the way, uh, here is a, here's a phenomenal thing about uh, the Druids. The Druids had very little down in writing. What they did was pass it on generation to generation by getting kids in schools, which is where Harry is, Harry Potter. He's in a Druid school. Uh, to learn uh, all of this stuff. They didn't put it down in writing. And one of the reasons that they didn't was simply because, uh, you know, some of the Roman uh, <laughs> Romans came up through there and uh, they didn't want any evidence against them. Oh, no, we, we, we don't. But they had it all in their head and they would give it down to generations by schools. But um, that wasn't true in every case. They, they used curious arts, brought their books together, and burned them before all men. What a testimony. Hey, this is what Jesus Christ did for me. I don't need Harry Potter and his sorcery, his wizardry, his magic in my life. Jesus Christ is the God of the universe, the controller of all history, and I'm, and I'm, I'm pitching this stuff. Now, one of the reasons we believe that they pitched it is because if you have that stuff around your house, young people are gonna do what? Eventually, pick it up, read it, be influenced by it. They got rid of it. And uh, they counted the price of them and found it uh, 50,000 pieces of silver. Now, some say, uh, depending on uh, uh, the market today, this could be upwards to $25,000, give or take uh, a few thou. Uh, but uh, the upshot is in verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. You see, that's our objective. We want the Bible to prevail, not Harry Potter. 
Uh, we want churches to grow. We want young people learning the Word of God. We don't want them learning about uh, other gods, other ways, uh, uh, and so forth, that are going to so influence them to give up on the God of the Bible. Now, I, I'm not saying that we uh, should not, in America, be, be tolerant. This is a free country. However, with regard to us and what we're attempting to do with these other people is get them out of darkness, heathen darkness. All right, let's go from here to the book of Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. We believe, then, that there is a Bible prohibition on wizardry. Now, mind you, we could take on uh, the entire realm of the occult. But because this book is mainly about wizardry, we're going to uh, stick with uh, that theme. We believe that God uh, forbids it. And uh, in chapter number 20 of the book of Leviticus, uh, starting with verse number 22, it says, Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments to do them, that the land, whether I bring you to dwell therein, spew you not out. Now, Again, we would say to those who want to enforce the Ten Commandments in, uh, in the United States of America, let's enforce everything that is part of the, of the commandments. This is part of the commandments, the judgments, the statutes that I give to you. Um, okay, fine, uh, let's do that so that our land will be okay. You, you know what they're going to have to do? They're going to have to take on New Age occultism, and they're going to have to take on Harry Potter to do it. How in the world can you keep the first commandment which says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and read books like Harry Potter, which introduces you to spirit guides, uh, to other gods, to demonism, and occultic influence, and still be moral in keeping the, the first commandment? You cannot do it. It's an impossibility. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, therefore I have abhorred them. Now, uh, the word uh, there is, uh, is similar to that of, um, of, uh, of dis <laughs> I've either got a bug or my nubs are standing straight up because I've gotten a chill. <laughs> okay, well, it, it itches. Just don't want to get bit if it's something making a nest up there. Don't say it, there's not enough to make a nest in there. Okay, where am I? Uh, and God is disgusted with them. Uh, they, uh, they make uh, him sick. And I have said to you, you inherit their land. For I, last part of verse 24, I am the Lord your God. And note what he has done here. I've separated you from other people. Now, now here's where we... Uh, fly in the face of all of these people who are multicultural. Uh, and, and that is, we're to be different. We're to come out from among them. We're to be separate from these things. And that's what God said to Israel. I've separated you from this business. Why did I hate those nations? Why is there judgment on nations around the world even today? It's because they worship the same God. It's a different name, uh, perhaps a little bit different form or what have you. But they're worshiping the gods that God has already killed people over. The Egyptians, uh, the Canaanites, on and on. I've separated you. And ye shall therefore put a difference between the clean and the unclean. Why? Last part of verse 25. Because I've separated you, uh, or excuse me, which I've separated from you, rather, as unclean. You're to be holy, for I'm holy. And now here's the second thing. Instead of saying separated, he uses the word severed. 
Now, separated means to, to be different. Severed means to, to cut, the, cut the cords. Uh, anything that the, there is a, a bond or that's binding upon two individuals. God says, I've cut the cords. I've not only separated you, I've severed you from them. And so he goes on to, to say, verse 26, that you should be holy for I'm holy and that you should be mine. Well, uh, and verse 27 is uh, uh, we're, we're going to read, comment, stop and start here then in the next hour. A man also or a woman that has a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, and their blood shall be upon them. The word wizard is Yedeane in the Hebrew, and it means the knowing one or the one that understands occultic language. We're making our kids wizards. Uh, we're giving them this knowledge. And, uh, and all along, it is displeasing uh, to God, in, in our opinion. Why can't we teach them the word? Why can't we give them good literature, classic literature that teaches true Christian values and so forth? Uh, doesn't even, uh, there are some books out there that are good that, that, uh, that teach Christian values that aren't even Christian books, but, but at least there is a true basic morality in, in the, uh, the books that, that would be Bible based. No, no, we have to have Harry Potter as the biggest best seller of all in our world and it is a shame and it is a tragedy